Sherdog.com here with Rich Franklin, one championship VP, former UFC champion. Rich, when you when you stepped away from competition in 2012, when you joined uh, one championship in 2014, did you ever think that in 2022, people would still be asking you multiple times a day what you weigh? <laughs> I, I did not actually. I thought that might be old news, but uh, no, I walk around. I walk around about two twenty, which is about. Not, I mean, I look a lot bigger, but I'm only maybe like eight or nine pounds bigger than my heaviest weight when I was in competition. Because remember, I moved back up to two hundred five. Right. So when I competed, for example, against Forrest, I was at my peak weight two twelve. So I'm, you know, I'm not that much heavier, but not training 25, 30 hours a week will change your physique. For sure. <laughs> uh. You've been part of the sport since there was almost nobody watching, mm. since there was almost everybody watching. You were in the UFC in the pre as well as post tough eras. Now, this is a big thing. You're yeah. here helping to unveil one championship's partnership with Amazon Prime. This should mean more Northern uh, America exposure for a lot of these fighters. What do you think one championship brings that maybe American and Canadian fans will be surprised or pleased by? Oh man, this is there's a lot to this question. But first of all, I, I can talk about the entertainment value of one. If you've never been to an event, and I said this out on stage, it's like a like a rock concert is married to a sporting event. And we have this this staging system with this computerized LED background where we, we create these custom walkouts for all the athletes that's choreographed to the music that they walk out to. It includes oftentimes pyro, laser light shows, smoke, and it's something to truly see in the arena, the energy that you see there. You know, that mixed with the fact that we're not just an MMA organization, we're a martial arts organization. We have world-class talent in Muay Thai, kickboxing, and grappling. You've seen it recently with the signings. We have Uchecha that has transitioned over from just grappling to MMA. You've seen it with Mikey Musumeci recently, his match with him and Ari. The Rotolo brothers, they put on amazing grappling matches as well. You've seen our Muay Thai matches. Those matches are in four-ounce gloves. I wasn't a fan, personally, when we, we put the Muay Thai matches on our MMA events. I guess being an MMA purist, which is kind of an oxymoron because MMA is a mix of a bunch of different things, but I wasn't a fan and I saw the first Muay Thai match and I was like, this is actually pretty entertaining. I'm like, but I don't want to like it. And then we put our, our next one on and I, and I found like, man, these Muay Thai matches, they're, they're amazing to watch the kickboxing matches, the level of talent, the, the, the skill level jump that you see in those kind of matches. So I think bringing this unique product to the United States is something that the American fans North American fans have never seen before, so something that the U.S. and Canadian subscribers to One Prime are going to, this is a treat for them. Something else that One Championship will be bringing to uh, North American events when they start going on on that regular schedule that you mentioned during the press conference is One Championship's weight and hydration system. Yeah. For the uninitiated, One Championship fighters have to meet certain uh, minimum standards of hydration, and then they weigh in at a weight class that a North American fan would recognize as kind of a weight class heavier than what they expect. Yeah. Like, a, a, please. Yeah, so what, what happened when we implemented the hydration protocols is that essentially, for example, when I was fighting at 185, I, I basically walked around at 205, a little above 205, mm -hmm. somewhere between 205 and 210, usually around 208. So technically, I'm walking around as a light heavyweight fighter because, you know, a couple pounds above 205. And this is essentially what all athletes do that are cutting weight. They're basically walking around at the weights above them. So what we what we did when we implemented the hydration is we said, okay, for example, our middleweight fighters will now move from that 185 class to the 205 class and we'll call that middleweight. So on with each weight class it essentially bumped up. The hydration protocol works like this because there's a lot of confusion in this in the US. And so one of the things that one championship does is it's like athlete safety is first for us. We do five week CT scans. I don't know of another organization that does that on the planet to make sure that there's no brain trauma when you're going actually going into the fight. And we do hydration protocols. The system is set up with hydration such that when you arrive fight week two days before the event, you will you will test we will test your urine for hydration to make sure you're fully hydrated. You have to make hydration, then you have to step on a scale and you have to make weight. You have to do both of those things simultaneously. You do that two days before the event, you're good to go. We test you again the day before the event. You also, once again, have to make hydration and weight simultaneously. If you do that two days and one day before the event, then you're marked off. You, you, can, you can compete. If you miss either weight or hydration, either of those two days, then on fight day, we repeat the process with you. 
Now, to date, we've never actually had an athlete miss hydration because you cannot fight if you're dehydrated. Mm -hmm. But if you miss weight and you're, you're on hydration but you miss weight, then a catch weight can be negotiated. So you'll see sometimes on the cards that we have catch weights. And that's how the system works. If, you, if you're not making weight, you're losing a percentage of your purse and so on. But that's the basic premise of the hydration system so that it keeps the athletes from these large weight cuts that we've historically seen in the past. Because those things have implications on you know, organ health, particularly with the brains. The brain cavity is the last thing to rehydrate on the body. So it only amplifies concussions, concussion symptoms, post-fight and whatnot. And that's the intent behind uh, the hydration protocol. The okay, the the more complicated or the trickier part of this is what will happen when you bring those events to areas, say in the United States, that are governed by commissions that are used to doing things a different way. How will that cooperate or, or conflict with those? Well, you, things like fight league CTs, you know, all the athletic commissions that I've spoken to, any of the hydration pro protocols, fight league CTs, none of that stuff is is a sticking factor for them. I mean, it's it's. It sounds very complicated, but to get a third party involved to actually test hydration is not rocket science. So it's just something that on our side, anything that an organization implements as a safety standard that you want to go above and beyond, the states don't mind. Like They have a minimum requirement of things. And if they're not trained to do these things, then you need to bring the third party in to do it. So none of that stuff will be an issue for us. Will the, like the group of people or the governing body kind of managing compliance on your end from fighters on that? Will it be the same people that have been doing it for the Asian events? Will they come over? Or will you just kind of bring those protocols and get a new team of people doing them here? No, we'll, we'll bring the protocols and then all the state like the states have their protocols, so mm -hmm. we'll match their protocols. So anything like that, like a drug testing or any of that kind of stuff, we'll, we'll use third parties for. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, you mentioned the Ruotolo brothers. Yeah. Any... Any plans in the immediate, near, far future for them to cross over to other disciplines and maybe compete in MMA? I think, I think they said this. I don't want to put words in their mouth, but I think right now they're focused on grappling for the moment. Mm -hmm. um, I'm excited to see them grapple again. I don't, I don't think we've actually uh, announced any kind of matchup with them yet. I would like to see uh, the two of them switch their opponents from, uh, you know, uh, Ty K like switch up and Gary and, and Shinya and do the same matches. Uh, but um, no, I, I don't. I don't think MMA is in their near future. But that's as per them. So that's a better question for them. Not me. Same uh, question about Bushesha. Obviously, one of the greatest grapplers of all time, like mm -hmm. without exaggeration. Yeah. But signed with one championship when at least there were no explicit plans to branch off into grappling. He signed to be an MMA fighter. Yeah. Any talks with him about maybe like taking on grappling as well? Uh, I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure he would be. Uh, definitely open to that, but I think right now, like Buchets is climbing the ladder pretty quickly, and I personally would, um, you know, like to see him at some point in time in the near future in the hunt for that strap in the heavyweight class. Fantastic! Uh, thank you so much, Rich Franklin, and one championship. I appreciate your time. Thanks for having me.